When I design and build websites, I like to look at every section as a modular component, which can be reused in different ways to create new pages and build cohesive visual patterns across the website. Now this really compounds when you also reuse those patterns across all of your client websites to help turn out projects much faster. So here I'll show you how to create an internal patterns page that you can use for all of your Wix Studio client sites. Feel free to follow along. To get started, let's begin with a template. Obviously you should create your own set of designs for this process, but this isn't a design tutorial. It's a workflow tutorial. So we'll start with this template, link below. Okay, so first we're gonna rename our homepage. We'll change that into patterns. You can name it whatever you'd like, but patterns is what I like to go off of as there's going to be a lot of other pages if you pull from another template. So what we wanna do now is basically just split out as many sections as we can and so that we can have building block assets that we can reuse later. So for instance, right here, this is like a scroller, right? So as you scroll, it kind of stacks on top of each other. Well, what we can do is split this out, right? We don't need to have this entire section during our asset. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these. Delete them one by one. Here, I'm just basically grabbing the cell and deleting it. Okay, perfect. So we've got this section is ready to go. This section is on its own, so that's great. Continuing on, we've got a section with a few cells. Now, we might want to save this whole section as an asset, and that would be probably a good idea, but I could also see us using this, like kind of going back and forth, so we can have multiple rows, and maybe they actually stagger, so this ends up being on the left side instead of the right side, we kind of reverse it. So what I think we want to do is I'll copy and I'll paste so that we got two sections, right? So I'll go ahead and grab here. And it also helps if you open up the layers panel so you can grab the cells individually. So here I, you can see that I'm grabbing the bottom one. Go ahead and delete them. We're now sitting here with a nice little text intro that we can use for later. But the spacing is just a little bit off. So depending on how you're going to be using this in other areas, it may be good idea to keep it open like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just simply center this. So now we've got at least consistent spacing on both sides. I'll grab this cell now and I'll delete it. And there you go, we've got basically the same design as what we had earlier, but now we're sitting here with a intro text section and a section grid with an image and text. Now, as I said earlier, we could maybe consider kind of staggering these back and forth. So maybe all we'll do is swap these two where we'll grab the stack that's inside of the cell and I'll cut that. And then I'm just gonna paste it over here. I'll go ahead and grab the image and paste it over on the other cell. Okay, looks great. Now we've got two options. So, you know, here we might call this one text and image, and then we might call this one image and text, or we can call text left image and text right image. So for the patterns to be able to work, we're not going to be able to save elements like this. So we've got events down here, down here also is a form. We're not gonna be able to save these as assets. See, if I right click, there is no save as asset button. But then right here, since there's nothing beyond a button, it will allow me to save as an asset. So just keep that in mind if you ever don't see a form like that. Maybe what you wanna do is set up like this, leave this section, right? So you might call this section a form section, but inside of the cell, we'll go ahead and delete the form and just leave this empty cell sitting here. That way we know that we wanna add a form later, but we'll get there after we drop the asset in. And maybe for this event, we don't actually need this one since we've already got a bunch of intro kind of text sections that we could reuse in a similar way. So I'll just go ahead and delete that one as we're not gonna turn that into an asset. We'll split a few more of these up and then we are ready to go on our on our asset saving. 
And then now what I want to do is just make sure that you go to other pages and browse for additional sections that you might want to include. So here we've got a completely different layout that we didn't have on the home page. So maybe we'll grab this whole section, head back to the patterns page and then paste. So now we've got two heroes, right? We've got a hero intro and then a hero grid, right? So let's go ahead and start renaming these layers to make it so that we can keep an eye on that because everything right now is just section, 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 right? So uh, all you have to do is make sure that the layers panel is open and double click on this left side. We'll call this text only hero, or maybe we'll just call it hero text only. That way kind of heroes, hero is the thing that stands out. So hero image grid, perfect. This will be just a large image, okay. And this is like a stack sticky slider. So we'll call it sticky stack slider scroller. Okay, let's head back to about, make sure that there's no other sections we wanna save. This one is kind of cool, but it's pretty unique to this website. So I don't know if we'll be reusing it on other websites. This is kind of a re repetition this is kind of a repeat of what we've already got on the home page, so we don't need to save that either over on the pattern side. This one's pretty cool and it's got a nice little image in the center, so I'll probably copy that one, head back to the patterns page and paste it here. We'll call this um, CTA section center, centered image. Move that down to the bottom. Perfect. Oh, let's go ahead and split this section out. So I'll go ahead and probably just delete this actually because we've already got a intro section. Well, you know what? This has a button in it. So we could kind of have that as a little modifier next to it. So we've got this text intro right here, right? But maybe we also have a text intro with button button. So now these are basically the same things, but this one's got a button, this one doesn't. It'll end up looking something like this. Side note here, with the new Figma to Wix Studio plugin, you could create your designs in Figma where you have dozens of modules broken out into unique frames. You could import those frames one by one as new sections instead of new pages, and you'll end up with something very similar to this setup. So we've got all of our sections laid out in a patterns page. We're gonna turn everything into assets. But before we do that, we always need to double check that things are tied to the site styles. So click on every piece of text, make sure they're linked to a header or paragraph. And if there's an asterisk on anything, make sure that you update the site style, create a new one or revert it back. Same with colors too. So all containers, sections, text that has fills, make sure that they are connected to the site styles, not to the custom colors. This makes it so that these assets will dynamically update on the sites that they're added to. I'll demonstrate that in a second, but just make sure you do that. Okay, perfect. We're ready. So select the first section, right click and save as an asset. Give it a name and on the add to field, create a new library called client modules. Repeat this for all the sections, adding them to the client modules library. It'd be a good idea to save parts of the sections as assets as well. Maybe in the future, this container could be reused in other ways to create new modules on the fly. So select that container, right click and add as an asset as well. For naming, I like to go based on how they might be used rather than describing the layout. So this could be big CTA box, instead of centered text call out. And this could be feature breakout. Both have CTAs, but the usage is different. So this will help navigate things a lot easier. Okay, so we have a library of assets. Let's head to another site and see how this works. Press the plus button, assets, and here we have our libraries listed, including the new client modules library. 
find an asset you want to use and drop it in. You see how it updated the typography and the colors? Now, if you drop the same asset on another site, it'll keep the layout, but it looks unique and cohesive to the rest of the site. That's why it's so important to connect things to the site styles. What's really cool is all assets are just a jumping off point. This means you can change the size of the asset entirely. You could add some styling to the internal elements and even move things around. Since these are not components, you are free to make changes to the instance as needed. Now in the future, if you want to make a change to a previously saved asset, head back to the pattern site. Make a new version of the asset by duplicating the section in the patterns page, make some changes, and save it as a new asset with a V2 tag. Then if you no longer plan to use the old version, simply find it in the assets library and delete it. The only thing to remember here is these are not components. Assets are purely a jumping off point. So making these changes will not affect the times where you have used that asset. This is good though, because you can make new assets, delete ones that you don't need anymore, and you don't have to worry that it'll break your client's sites. For more web design tactics like this, be sure to check out the Wix Studio Academy.